one sales production and cash receipts budgets this is Ken Boyd the owner of St. Louis test preparation here's our email address and our phone number you will also now find us on Facebook at St. Louis test prep in order to start the discussion I wanted to discuss a term called stock outs which we can define as running out of product and if you're out of your product you can't fill a customer order and sell something here's when it becomes an issue when it's the beginning of a new month and we're just starting production and we don't have any inventory from the prior month so if somebody comes in our front door on the first of the month and wants to buy something we may be out of stock so how do we avoid this problem in planning our production what we do is we always have a percentage of the following month's production added to the current month so we never get to the beginning of a new month and be out of inventory the whole point of this is we don't want to lose a sale so I've jumped over to the production budget and we have an example here here's our question to guard against stockouts Acme Company requires that 20 percent of next month's sales be on hand at the end of each month given the budgeted sales in units which is this line how much would Acme need to produce each month and this is how I'd suggest that you set up the question let's start with June we have budgeted sales in units and then we have a desired ending inventory and it said in the question up here that 20 percent of next month's sales should be on hand at the end of the current month so since 40,000 is our plan production for next month July 20 percent of that 20 percent of 40,000 or 8,000 should be the ending inventory we want in number of units so we add those two up and we get 38,000 let's go to July plan production of 40 this time our desired ending inventory is 20 percent of the August production which is 60,000 so 20 percent of that number is 12,000 but now we subtract off the beginning inventory the inventory that we're starting July with because that's those are units that we don't have to produce so let's subtract that off and that was the ending inventory from June becomes the beginning inventory from July the ending inventory from July becomes the beginning inventory, ending, the beginning inventory for August you can see how this flows ending inventory becomes beginning ending inventory becomes beginning and so on so the formula for our units to be started is the 40,000 budgeted units budgeted production plus the ending inventory we want less any beginning inventory from the prior period that's why I have in parentheses and italics prior period ending inventory flipping back to uh, PowerPoint let's talk about the materials budget we talked about how many units we want to make but then we need to think about how much material we need to make those units which is why I say adjusting to units in the first bullet point when a unit of production requires a specific amount of material pounds of material yards of denim we should plan based on materials needed not just units we'll see that in Excel in a moment we should avoid stock out some materials because if we don't have enough material we don't have enough production so here's our direct materials budget in our question Stewart Bakery needs pour, four pounds of flour to produce each of its wedding cakes a wedding cake is a unit to avoid the risk of stock outs Stewart requires that 10 percent of next year's of next quarter's production be on hand at the end of the quarter so this is by quarter not by month given the pro budgeted production in units which is this line here what would Stewart need to produce each month so in this case we're taking units and we're multiplying each of those units by four pounds to get the pounds of material that we need for production the rest of the chart looks the same our de desired ending inventory is 10 percent of the following quarters production so 10 percent of 48,000 is 4,800 10 percent of 64,000 6,400 and just as we did before we're going to subtract off beginning inventory this number in blue I just gave to you 4,000 and then from there you can see how 
Ending inventory becomes beginning. Ending inventory, second quarter, becomes beginning for third, etc. And then our formula is the same. Production needed 40000 Add $4,800 in desired inventory, less what we already have. Beginning inventory gets us to units to be started for the particular quarter. The last thing in this video is cash receipts. Let's talk about a budget for that. Credit sales are those sales that are not paid in cash when the product or service is delivered. So as a result, they're receivables. This relates back to our original discussion about the balance sheet. Well, based on experience, experience that we have with customers, business cycles, etc., we can forecast payments on credit sales, that is, when the dollars will come in the door in cash. And again, this relates back to the balance sheet. It relates back to the allowance for doubtful accounts, how much do I expect not to be paid, and bad debt expense, how much do I need to expense because I'm certain that I won't be paid, for example, if the client goes bankrupt, the customer goes bankrupt. So flipping back to Excel, our cash receipts budget. Robert's Catering begins April with a $30,000 account receivable balance. All of Robert's sales are on credit sales. No sales are paid in cash at the time of the transaction. We hand somebody an invoice and they pay us later. Based on experience, Robert expects to collect 70% of the credit sales in the month that you sell something, 25% of the credit sales in the month following, and 5% to be uncollectible, which means no cash inflow. The question is, based on these monthly sales totals, how much will Robert collect for this quarter? So we start off with the account receivable balance, which we, we assume we get paid in April. 70% of April sales are 140,000 paid in April, 25% of it 50,000 paid in May. You can see the same flow for May, 70% in the month of May, 25% in the month following. The uncollected amounts in each period don't have any amount. So we line up when we get the cash with the month that the cash comes in. And you can see that we add up the cash collections at the bottom here for a grand total of 905000 We can check it this way. Our sales for the quarter is a million dollars. If we add the accounts receivable we get in cash, we subtract the June sales, the 25% that we're going to get in July, which is not in this quarter, we're going to subtract that. And then if we also subtract 5% of a million, which is the amounts that are going to be uncollected, we reconcile to our cash collection amount of 905000 so there's two ways of looking at the problem. That's the end of budgeting part one. We have a three hour long course that we teach through GoToMeeting, essential topics in management accounting you might use. You can find all of our videos on our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL. For live tutoring and chat sessions, both one-on-one -on -one and in small group, here's our website, our email address, and our phone number. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.